Kaczynski, and I'm the Digital Code Specialist, uh, working with our Digital Codes Premium Platform. Uh, also with us today is another ICC member, Joram Swade. Um, he'll be monitoring Q&A questions that uh, we'll take at the end. Um, feel free to post any questions in, in the Q&A chat section there. I believe it's defaulted to um, everyone to view so you know people can see the questions that are being asked. Uh, if we have time, we'll take some during the during the presentation. If not, we will circle back and catch all of them at the end just so we can get through through everything. So uh, during this webinar, I'll uh, explain some of the features of the Digital Codes Premium platform and then uh, go through a demo of uh, how it looks uh, actually working on the platform. So with the development of this new platform by ICC um, in the Digital Codes, what we're doing is moving beyond the, the, the past limitations, moving past the limitations that uh, print and PDFs have and moving on to the digital platform, which is gonna allow for access to the content everywhere. The content will always be current and you're gonna have the ability to collaborate uh, with your team with some of these features that, that you see on here, along with um, offline view, um, if you don't have any data connections, keeping up on all the, obviously, as we said, the new revisions, even the code change proposal process, um, any of the significant changes. And like I mentioned, the ability to organize notes and highlight and use bookmarks that you can use both individually and with the other members on your team. Uh, a couple other great features that the Digital Codes Premium, we'll call it DCP platform has is that um, now you have the ability to, you know, copy, paste, and print uh, sections and subsections. Um, you know, that we're going to have, we have expanded search functionality and the ability to, you know, quickly ac access and, as we said, collaborate. Um, you see the, the, the note at the bottom here, and um, we'll post this link at the, at the end of the, the presentation as well, too. But we always encourage people to try the 14-day premium free trial. Uh, it is the DCP complete, which has all the codes, standards, commentaries, every title that we have on our platform. So you can look through that for that 14 days. Um, it's free. There's no credit card required uh, to, to access it. And um, you're just able to log on. You'll get your, your information emailed to you and you can start using that. Uh, and then also there's, uh, I mentioned the apps. I'll get into a little bit further that is uh, that are available in both the App Store and the Android um, versions as well too. All right, so as, a, as we say digital codes premium, when we refer to that, that means the DCP will have all these features that we're going over um, uh, today. So whether you're getting the singles, which you have the ability to choose just single titles to have access to, uh, the collections, uh, mainly the, those would be like um, specific state uh, collections. Uh, if that's all you need, you can have that. But we really do recommend, first of all, the, the Digital Codes Premium Complete. As I mentioned, that has everything that we have on our platform, uh, including you know all the ICC codes, the commentary, study guides, um, and all the standards and, and other titles that we have available uh, on there as well that will have everything. And then this is just a list of some of the organizations that uh, we do have content our uh, partnerships will to, with to provide content in our library. And you're able to, you know, go through and search. If you try that 14 day free trial, you'll be able to access each one of those uh, um, pieces of content uh, in the index section as well, too. All right, so speaking about the different pricing, uh, there's uh, obviously a, a difference in what the price would be if you're in premium singles or premium collections. Uh, the premium complete, as you see here, we're, we're showing the pricing for um, members. Uh, if you're an ICC member, you do receive this discount. If you're in an organization that's going to be ordering multiple licenses, um, only one person needs to be a member to receive the discount. So one member, you know, if they purchase the discount using their ICC membership discount, those licenses can be used among other people within their organization um, who do not necessarily have to be ICC members to take advantage of using the platform and the content. And then we do offer um, multiple license discounts. This just kind of gives a general idea of what those price breaks are. Um, if you go online, if you've been exploring on our digital codes platform, premium platform page, uh, if you enter in specific amounts, you'll see what the exact pricing is for an annual subscription. And then there's an extra 
uh, radio button that you can click on and uh, see what the three-year plan would be uh, for additional savings as well. Now, when we describe our, our DCP platform and what I'm going to show you in the demo, um, you may have seen mention of the DCP enterprise. Now, the functionality and the way the codes are delivered, uh, the user experience is going to be the same when I would refer to each of these. Um, we developed the DCP enterprise platform uh, specifically for people who are managing, managing larger numbers of people. I mean, we could do it for you know, as few as 20 would probably be about the range, but as you add more people, um, the advantages of the DCP enterprise will be that everyone will have a seat. I guess we can use that differentiation. Um, I'll use licenses for you know our regular DCC, DCP platform, but when we talk about enterprise, we'll call those seats because if you do the enterprise version, everyone's going to, so to speak, have a seat at the platform, be able to access the content whenever. Um, if you're using licenses, uh, you can make those concurrent, meaning if you have a group of 20 people in your office, um, not everyone's going to be on at the same time. You could acquire five licenses and make those a concurrent so those 20 users could all use um, the platform, but only five could be on at a time. The DCP Enterprise, uh, as I mentioned, I can go into more detail if uh, people have questions at the end, but provides more flexibility for onboarding people and managing them and everyone would be guaranteed a seat they wouldn't be locked out in case all of the licenses are you were being used and then just a couple screenshots of the administrative functions but like i said i can dive into that in both an um, uh, in individual webinar uh, if your company is interested in you know diving a little bit further in this we can uh, uh, explain that a little bit further and Jerome, I know we're taping this. If there's any questions, you go ahead and interrupt me where you feel it should be. Otherwise, we'll hold them to the end. And we've pretty much been able to answer all the questions. So, like I said, feel free to post them as we're going along here. And Jerome will either interrupt or uh, we'll circle back and, and catch them all at the end here. All right. I think most people, if you're on this webinar, are probably familiar with this page. This is the ICC section for um, the digital codes. So if you're going to the codes.icc.org, um, actually you have the ability to, uh, uh, and I guess we can use like individual homeowners or things like that, if they wanted to look up a particular term, um, they would be able to, slide. got my WebEx buttons all over here. This just basically offers a free, um, view only version for anyone that would come to this website. And I'll just mention this because I'm going to circle back to um, the point I'm making here. Actually, it's having me log in because it knows I already have an account. But if someone was looking for this information here, they could see where this uh, would be referred to in the I codes and some of the other publications, uh, but they wouldn't have the ability to share that content or to um, copy or paste or anything like you would once you sign in. To your DCP license and platform, which I'm doing right here. So as you see, the, the first thing that you'll see the change here, it does uh, have my login name and information. It shows that I do have the complete, um, so it knows what libraries I have here, the titles in my library. And then you notice that this logo here changed uh, from the regular uh, ICC digital codes to the, the premium. So this shows that you are in the premium platform. Now we do have um, advanced search functions. We're actually adding more functionality and doing some more advanced searches here, but to just kind of give you an example, you can search for both titles and content. If you were just to put in, for example, the title for the IRC, first thing you'll notice is that when you have the digital codes premium, you're always gonna have that most recent version available to you. For jurisdictions, uh, organizations that are using previous cycles, Everything else will be included. As you see down here, we're going on 218, all the versions, uh, whichever version they are in the commentaries. And uh, I think most of our titles that we've digitized go back to 2012, I've seen 2009. So the nice thing about this is um, you'll have the most recent code plus the versions that have um, been published before them as well. So if we switch back and do a content search, I'm using that toggle over there. Uh, let's do means.
always a good one to bring back lots of uh, results. Um, so what it's going to do here is it's going to bring back the results for um, a, whatever search uh, information that you put in here. I'll show you this real quick too, the advanced search functions. As you can see, you're probably familiar with different ways you can conduct searches, adding you know all the words, none of the words. Um, another great feature is the near search feature. So if you're looking for means of egress, you know, next to basement, um, it would pull back those results uh, that occur within 50 words of each other. So you can kind of direct more closely where you want your results to be shown from. But as it's bringing these all back here, you can see which title it's coming from. If you were doing other searches and wanted to include, for example, previous years, it would also include that as well too. But as you scroll down, you'll be able to see exactly where it's coming from, the chapter section. Uh, if it's a different title, it'll show you exactly as, that as well. So if we're gonna scroll through here, we can see the title, the chapter section number, you wanna jump right into the exact place where that occurs, it'll take you right there. And as we scroll down, you see there's links you know obviously if they're related to the topic there it'll pop up right there it will take you right to there that section um, and also now you're going to see different colored text i'll point this out here this is really helpful especially as you first start using it you see i'm over here on the left side menu bar the legend information it tells you what the different um, text colors will mean uh, changes from the previous ver edition are in the blue or the red text the fuchsia text and you know those would be city or local amendments that would be changes and basically anything else that you might run into as far as an icon or a feature will be uh, given in an overview here these things i'll go through as we're going through the content um, but also then you also have the uh, these icons here if they're clickable uh, when you see them they'll be clickable you can go to the valuation service reports the es reports uh, any errata that was uh, um, uh, produced or added. And uh, this is a feature that people definitely like having to the um, code development process. This will link out to uh, the committee hearings that, that are going on for code changes. There's even videos that are attached to that as well too. So legend information will allow you to see what the different um, icons are. All right, so when you're in the digital codes premium, you do have these uh, waffles, we'll call them over here on the side. This will allow you to do a couple different things. If you were, well, let me show you this first. Let's take, if we wanted to highlight this, the, these two sections. Now you saw I just highlighted, this is, this would work in a copy, you know, a copy and paste. If you want to put in a document, the simple control C, control V is now active and you're able to use when you're in DCP. So you could copy this and put it into an email, into um, uh, any other type of uh, document that you would need to copy and paste, it'll allow you to lift that and then paste that right in as well too. So while I got this highlighted, if you want, wanted to make notes on that particular section, this will allow, no, I got the WebEx blocking me there. Okay, it works the same way. So the notes in the bookmark um, uh, would work in the same way, allows you to customize a uh, a note in here and so whatever you would type in here you could uh it would be retained there and then the nice thing about it is you could put it into different project tags if you had different um uh, pro excuse me uh, like projects jurisdictions or anything you can customize these and then it will assign that tag to it and then when you save it as you can see here, this is right where I highlighted and put the um, the notes here. Uh, there's the information that I, I custom put in there. It would be had assigned that demo tag so you could find it later and I'll show you where you can see that on the, the left menu bar again. But if you're using this within your own, own license, this is always gonna appear there. Uh, if you're doing a concurrent license, anyone else that was also underneath your concurrent license in your organization would be able to see those notes as well too. So you have the ability to share that which then also gets into the next thing I'll show you here. If you wanted to share this with someone, you could do this within your organization. Um, you can notify them if they're also on digital codes platform, but it's also helpful if uh, you're corresponding with 
you know, perhaps a client or someone else that wouldn't be using this, you know, this particular platform, you could still put their email address in here. Uh, obviously, you can customize this to say whatever you'd like. And then you see the link that's here. So when they receive this email, even though they may not be on the Digital Codes Premium platform, it will take them to the, the free basic view that I showed you at the beginning there. So they could at least see the exact uh, sections that you have um, uh, shared with them and what you're referring to. So that's convenient where it can be used both internally and externally with um, individuals. And then the next thing I'll show here is uh, you have the ability to print. <clears throat> This actually performs two functions. As you can see here, you, you obviously can't print out the whole chapter or the book, but you can print out sections with subsections. So if you wanted to include the subsections, you could do this. And as I, uh, I click on that, I'll show you the other option that people have asked about. You see it formats it real nice. Um, this, you can and included all the subsections. This, you could do one of two things. Obviously, you can print it out. You also have the ability to download it, download it like you would with any other document. When you download it onto your desktop, if you needed to do markups, you know, with your PDF uh, software or any you know comments you want to make, that you would have the ability to to do that and then save that section as well. All right, so let's go through. The left side menu shows some of the um, the features in, in administrative functions that you have. Obviously, some of these are, are kind of explanatory, where you you know do the search, find the codes. Uh, premium for Teams, as I mentioned, I'll get in there a little bit further. Where it's a concurrent code, I'll just pop that up real quick, and, and may as well mention it. Uh, let's use that example <clears throat> that I uh, spoke of before. If you acquire five licenses for twenty people, what you would have the ability to do, so you can share that, is you would. Once you acquire your licenses in the administration um, uh, menu that you'll have, you could create, you could make those five digital code premium licenses be concurrent. And once you make them concurrent, then they would be classified as concurrent access licenses. So if you were to make all your five licenses concurrent when you log in, you would not see your you you have um you, you would not see your library there until you log in with the concurrent access and i'll click on that too it's going to show you the same thing so you've assigned all your five licenses to be used to 20 people so now they appear um through this menu to log in so this would allow any of those 20 users once they have logged into their own icc account then they would click concurrent you put in the access code that you have for your your office and then all 20 of those people could access those five licenses at any point, up to a total number of five people. For the sixth person to log on, they would have to, someone, one of the first five would have to have logged off before the license would become available to them. Um, and if there's inactivity on a user's account for 20 seconds, excuse me, 20 minutes, um, they will be logged out automatically. But that's, once again, I kind of explain the difference between what we have here using licenses that are concurrent as opposed to an enterprise solution, which we would call seats where no one would be denied a seat to, to access it. Uh, digital codes help. Uh, we try to make this really easy for you to get started. Um, we feel most of it's intuitive. Uh, if it isn't, you have the ability to go through here. The quick start guide is really helpful to get started, but then it dives into different questions. Um, most of your answers could be found there. If not, um, we do have customer support, the live chat and everything you see on the side. Um, and if you're doing something within your organization, you need some specific help uh, with your solution, uh, I will be available or someone else on my team. All right, so just scrolling down here real quick, I'll show these uh, quickly here. We'll leave time for questions at the end. Um, when you're in your library, you can search for the titles. I have the complete um, for this. So there's you know, 600 titles. We keep adding more, um, but this will show you, you know, recently viewed, if you're viewing something frequently, uh, if you have something that you're always accessing, you can put it on my favorites. And then if you happen to upgrade from a singles or collections, there'll be recently added ones. Uh, as well too. Dashboard kind of gives you another look at um, at your access, uh, another way to do the searches, and once again, your library's favorites, so you can manage them within here. If you wanted to unfavorite, you could do that as well too. 
And then here's where I want to show you where your project tads come up. So um, these were ones that I created while I was doing a demo. You have the ability to now come back here if you wanted to organize them, change them, edit them, edit the color, edit the title, add them here so it's consistent. So people are choosing from a, you know, a library of, uh, of, ta of project tags that you want to keep consistent. You can administer them all here. And then going on to my notes, my notes actually will include any of the notes that you've made plus bookmarks, basically any annotations. And as you can see here, it is um, organizing them by the specific books that uh, I put the, the, the notes in. So example, the IRC, which was the one we showed first. If we were to click on there, this will then expand. It shows that you have eight notes. It will then expand that to show you what all your notes are. And then it has an icon. This particular one was a bookmark. Uh, the ones with the pencils where you actually had wrote um, uh, notes on. So all these are held within here and organized by title. A couple things I'll show you that you can do. For example, if we were to select all notes. So I got eight notes selected there. Going back to um, <clears throat> showing how we could print it. We we'll put a, a specific title on there. It will generate a PDF. So sometimes, if you just you know wanted to take your collection of notes for a specific chapter or something like that, um, you want to have something printed that you can mark up in the field. You have the ability to do that. It'll you know, formats it real nicely. There's the custom title I made. It puts uh, the nice logo on there. It tells you when the tag when the tags or notes were created and keeps everything organized like that. Once again, you could download that or print it out. The other thing that you do with these notes, as we said, you know, the collaboration tools and updating and everything, uh, we, we make it easy on this platform, is that you would have the ability to now migrate. So I'm in, let's go back down to the IRC. I'm in the 2021 version. So the next cycle comes out, it's adopted by my jurisdiction, 2024 comes out. I would then have the ability to take all these custom notes, however many it is, eight, you know, 100, 200, whatever you have. You could then migrate them into the next version. <clears throat> so what it's doing is taking and organizing and, and what it's actually, it's uh, probably gonna spin for a bit here because uh, I don't have the, the 2024 out there yet. But what you're able to do is you can migrate them. It kind of explains it up here. You could either remove them all from your last version and migrate them all to the new version, or you could just copy them so they would stay both in, for example, the 2021 and the 2024. So once again, we're making it easy. When codes get updated, you're always gonna get the most uh, up-to-date information put into your platform. And if you wanna migrate your custom notes, you have the ability to do that going forward. Uh, license configuration. Um, I won't get too far into this right now. I, I know we're gonna do another webinar specifically for developing concurrent license, but this just kind of shows you that it'll show you um, how many licenses you have for that how many that you may have retained for your personal use, how many that you assigned to someone else. And then I'll show you this real quick. This is where you can make your concurrent code license. You would just generate a concurrent code. Um, you could auto generate a code. You can make your own custom one. But what you would do with this is once you have created that code and those uh, it's assigned to those licenses, you could then distribute to that code to as many people as you want. Um, when they have that code, they would be able to log in here first. This is a free ICC account that they could log into. And then whatever titles they have had access to, as I mentioned here, the concurrent access, they would enter in concurrent code there that you created and distributed to them. And then they could access the content. Um, using that example again, five licenses with 20 people. If you add on five more people, you could just hand those next five people what the code is, and they would be able to log on with the rest of the group. If someone leaves and you wanted to change the license, you have so they wouldn't be able to act, act, log in again underneath your license. You could do that. What I will suggest though is that if you um, edit your license, what you would do is you go back and it gives you the ability to edit it. Don't delete your concurrent license because what that would do was would remove your notes from it as well too. All you want to do is edit the concurrent code for the licenses. So five people of those uh, twenty five left, you generate and you edit a code, you edit your current license concurrent code, 
um, and then you would redistribute it to those people. So I'll make mention of this uh, again too with the DCP enterprise. You don't have to go through that process. I mean, it's it's easy enough for you know specific offices to use what I'm explaining, but in the DCP enterprise, you could add users individually by uploading like a CSV file with their um, name and email address. If someone leaves, you could block that email address from accessing it again. So once again, we're delivering the same experience as I'm showing you with the codes. Uh, it's just a different way to administer it. And the enterprise allows, um, like we said, for no one to be denied access and a little bit easier if you're looking to uh, manage individual um, uh, users uh, using the, the content. And then just down here, just to explain this, this is where your favorites are. So if you scroll down there, you could um, access that content as well too. I don't think I showed that at the beginning, but just at the by doing the IRC, if I pull that up, and you make it a, a favorite title, just the heart up there, like most other things work on, on the internet. So favorite or unfavorite, and then those will be easily accessed. Uh, either in your dashboard I showed you up there, or we keep them, the favorites down there as well, too. All right, and then I think I skipped over that one, but the sharing history it would just show you the if you any notes that you would share both internally <clears throat> or externally. And then I will mention we're gonna, definitely going to have enough time here. I'll finish here in the next five minutes, but. Um, the mobile app I did want to spend a little time on and just just kind of gives it an overview here. So when you have a digital codes premium platform premium subscription, you will be able to download these apps onto any of your mobile devices. Uh, you know, you get an app for from the Apple Store or Google or Android. And the great thing about it is that it will be on your phone, it will be mobile, it will be on your iPad. Now, it will sync up on your mobile device, any notes or anything that you made, you'll be able to access your entire library. Um, if you're out in the field and you have access through um, to the internet through your um, through your data plan, uh, you'll be able to make notes on your mobile device. It will sync back up to everything that you you had on your on your desktop as well too. And then the third and final thing that uh, is an added value is if you're out out in the field and you have no internet, no data, no uh, no connectivity you will still have access to any titles that you have downloaded. Um, we say you can download 15, uh, we put that limit at 15 different titles. It just matches up you know, with the 15 I codes. So you could download all 15 I codes, go out in the field. Um, you may not have access to you know, all the notes or any of the other collaborative features because you're not uh, connected via data, but you can still pull up the IRC. You could still search for any section. Um, access any content that you would want to from there. Uh, so you have the ability to do that. Now I mentioned the 15 titles, but we have over 600 titles uh, in our platform. If you wanted to delete and change things while you're in the office or connected to data, you could delete you know, five of the I codes, bring in five different standards or a collection or something like that as well too. So you have the ability while you're connected to the internet to manage your offline content uh, so you can use it even if you do not have any uh, data or connectivity out in the field. All right, I'll leave some time for question here. I guess, I mean, and just to summarize what we're trying to explain here, and, and as I mentioned, we're going to continue these webinar series with uh, different specific topics, and I also welcome you within the uh, the chat box there to go ahead and post topics that you'd like to see more coverage on or spend a little bit more time. Uh, we definitely design these to just kind of give an overview and leave questions at the end. Uh, but as users, we'd love to hear back from you how you're using it and what type of um, uh, you know answers that we can provide to you as well. But uh, what we can just say is that you know Digital Codes Premium Complete is a, it's a solution that will allow your organization to access codes and standards that are always up to date, can be accessed on your mobile devices, and um, allow you to share your custom notes content with other team members. It, like I said at the beginning, it goes beyond, I think, what people have been used to in the past, just using printed copies or PDFs that, you know, you don't know uh, if they're up to date at that point in time with DCP, you're going to be guaranteed that you're already always accessing the most recent content and the ability to collaborate with your team members. So I'll pause there for a second, Joram. I wasn't checking the chat box. 
but let me know if there's questions I can spend the next 20 minutes on more specifically or cover something in more detail. Sure, we, uh, we have a question. Um, does this, are uh, all reference standards included? Um, I guess we would have to, you would have to let me know which standards you're looking for. I mean, if you what I guess my first suggestion to you is definitely sign up for the 14 day free trial because it does have it's the complete version and it has everything that we have on our platform. So, I mean, you see me scrolling through here. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the best way to check and see, you know, see what there's, a, as I mentioned, there's some single titles and collections, but if you're going to, you know, start ordering, you know, multiple singles or multiple collections, you're going to get close to what the price is for the, um, the complete. And as I mentioned, uh, that'll include, you know, all the commentaries and everything, study guides, everything that we have available um, that are listed here, you know, in the menu as I'm scrolling through the many of them. Right. Um, we also had another question, which uh, I did answer was about, um, can you add additional licenses licenses at the time? And the answer is yes, they can be purchased at any time. Um, and then another question was about copy and paste function. Uh, does this easily cut and paste directly into AutoCAD and Revit or are there several steps in the CAD application to get it in? Um, I replied that one, Phil, basically premium supports and copies copy and paste, which is uh, makes it easy to transfer uh, the copy text to whatever application is desired. Obviously, we can't speak to AutoCAD, but with Control C, Control V, it should be seamless. So technically, you should be able to copy and paste easily into other applications. Yeah, anywhere you're using that shortcut, um, it allows that when you're in the digital codes premium. As I mentioned, the, the codes I show you are available in the, the basic view, but all the features I mentioned are, are what people can access if they're doing the free basic view. So copy, paste, printing, sections, and everything else uh, uh, is definitely an advantage why people like having this, yes. Uh, we have another question. Do you have any webinars for intern architects to use this for code review practices, meaning possibly providing them with a step-by-step -step process? It's a good suggestion. Write it down, Jor. We'll produce something like that. It's not scheduled yet, but that's why I was asking. We we love to hear back from the people that are using this, and we can start to design things. And I can pull in um, experts from the field too to show how they're they're using it as well too as uh, panelists. Uh, someone asked the difference between singles and collections. Um, you know, every title that we have in. Once again, I'm back on the main page of codes.iccsafe.org. Um, you can scroll through and, and see all the different collections that we have. Like I said, most of them are gonna be like state collections. This just kind of gives an example. Single titles, I mean, the 15, for example, let's use, uh, here's our iCodes. There's the 15, 20, uh, 2021 complete 15 plus the IGCC. Now, each one of those would be available as a single title. But in this case, we've grouped them together as a collection to be a little bit less expensive. Um, as you see, you know, that's like Florida, we have California, but as I was kind of mentioned, I'm not gonna do the pricing out right now. If you get the 15 I codes and maybe one or two state collections, you're basically up to uh, what the, the, the license would be for a complete. And at that point, you just get, I'm not exaggerating, I guess 10 times as much content for the same price. Any other questions pop up there, Jorm? Should we open up the mic here? This, this would be our shortest webinar, if so. Yeah, there's no other questions. A lot of uh, positive comments about being very insightful and helpful, so that's great. Um, well, I appreciate those comments. Um, yeah, no, this is something um, new that we have, um, have recently revived. And like I said, as more people are becoming interested in asking questions about this, uh, we definitely are gonna make this uh, uh, a, a regular series, you know, maybe we do an overview once a month here, but um, like I said, please post notes in there about specific features that you would like uh, to dive more into. I mean, for example, you know, setting up, uh, you know, concurrent licenses for multiple people in your office. I know that's one on our schedule, develop and we'll promote to everyone. Um, also, you know, I, I kind of 
just went over, went between the differences between, you know, let's call that, like we said, the DCP platform and the DCP enterprise. Um, I know it's just going to be a little bit, um, but depending on the size and the amount of administration that you have to do, but the enterprises definitely have, has a great feature set and no one would be denied the access. That's why some organizations go to that because they need all their people to have access at any point in time. All right, is that it for the chat box? I will stay on for another 20 minutes. You want to open up microphones or how you want to handle this last part here? Oh uh, yeah, that's it for the chat box. Maybe if someone wants to raise their hand, um, I'll try and unmute now and see if it's not too noisy. If people have got their uh, microphones on mute as well. Let me just unmute everybody. Yeah, what happens, Joram unmutes everyone. So if you're loud in the background, you nope. know, go ahead and um, mute yourself, but it's open floor, go ahead. Hello, this is Mark Rodriguez from Sunrun. Um, I was wondering if I, I may have missed it. I kind of joined a little bit late, but how does one access the commentary? Like a commentary uh, from proposals, is that is that accessible through the premium? Yes, you were talking about um, the DCP stuff or? Well, I'm looking for like the con, I do a lot of code development work. So I'm looking okay. for the context behind um the code language and i know sometimes there's um, information from the various code action committees or yep. commentary on the proposal no no that's good let me go back to that i i did briefly mention it but i didn't dive into it so this is why we leave questions at the end here so people can uh, can ask those so you got a specific um code you want to reference otherwise i'll just look for that icon so. I do not have one right off the hand here. Joram, if you find one, let me know. But yeah, once again, it's going to be one of those uh, icons there. I wonder if it would give me a result on this. I'm in Solar, so I don't know if you can find one in, in 324, maybe. I'm sorry, what? Um, in section 324, you might find something there. Uh, in the IRC still? Correct. Always love it when people know where to look, helps me out. <laughs> So I'm showing once again all the different ways to access your titles. No. No, I'm holding you accountable then. Hold on. There's the How is commentary indicated? Is it one of those P's? Well, the code development process, yeah, actually, you know, there we go. Code action hearing. This is what I'm referring to where they're showing the actual videos of the hearings. So those are available. Too. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that was your specific question, but what I was, what I was scrolling around looking for was, Package refund. What was that? So, yeah. I wonder if I click on there, it will take me. Refund. All right. Did that answer no. the question? Yeah. So. I believe so. Yes. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. yeah, no, any, yeah any, anytime where you see those, there's all, there'll always be links out to, uh, to what that additional information is. So, it's nice that yeah, we put right the, the, the sections. All right, any other questions from the audience? We had a question. Uh, okay, what 
on the chat about yep. um, <clears throat> is there a limit of how many people can have access to concurrent license? There is not a limit to the concurrent licenses. It's going it's going to be restricted by how aggravated people get if they can't uh, add on. So, um, you know, like we said, in uh, probably the best. Uh, analogy someone uh, brought up to me is like if you have five licenses it's uh if you happen to be at like happy hour in a bar there's five bar stools um five people can sit down and order at the bar and those other 20 have to wait till someone leaves before they put in their order so um they can be used by many people um but you, yeah people will get aggravated if you don't have enough licenses as joran mentioned you could add, add on additional licenses as well too um, I don't know if they prorated. I think what they would do is like you buy five licenses for that annual agreement and three months later you add on another five, they would just be on different cycles. So if you're going to do a larger purchase, we can organize that maybe a little bit differently, but currently that's the way it would work because it allows it to easily be added. You could just add on more licenses. They would go into, you know, the person who acquired those five plus five, 10 licenses. And if they already had five concurrent, they can make those next five as concurrent licenses as well. Make them all. All 10 of them concurrent. Anything else in there, John? I didn't see anything else come up. Okay. What what I will do is we will um we'll end it here. So I'm not going to present any new co new content, but I will stay on for another 15 minutes and answer questions. Uh if anyone wants to uh to hang out for a bit, I'll stay on for another 15 minutes. I thank everyone for attending. Um I think everyone's who's uh, registered will be on the list to receive information about uh, upcoming seminars.